NBC News in depth tonight. Americans eating themselves to death. As we begin this new decade, the country is facing a dangerous weight problem. For decades, Americans have heard the same message. Americans are heavier than ever, with the obesity epidemic only getting worse. Experts worry that will translate into declining life expectancies. We're just too darn fat, ladies and gentlemen. But what if the connection between weight and health was a lot more complicated than it seemed? I don't think you should rule out the idea that our whole perspective has been wrong about this. How much would you like to lose? By the early 1990s, Americans' obsession with weight was in full swing. You can lose weight deliciously with the aid of AIDS. I found the secret to losing weight. It's sprinkle away, and it can work for you. CDC epidemiologist Katherine Flegel decided to conduct a study to see whether the number of overweight Americans had actually shifted over the last few decades. I thought we should write an article, figuring it hadn't really changed for like 20 years. Much to our surprise, we found an increase, and that was really the point at which suddenly interest perked up. The increase was across the board, and that's why researchers are mincing no words. In the 90s in the United States, we have had an epidemic of obesity. After Flegel's study, the research intensified as others examined the connections between weight and health, producing estimates that excess weight could be contributing to 300,000 to 500,000 premature deaths each year. There are new results out tonight from a study on obesity and health. They underscore what you may already know in your gut. Fat is a health risk across the board. If something more isn't done to fight obesity, if Americans don't change the way they eat, obesity will soon be the greatest single cause of death in the country, greater than smoking. Flegel was surprised by these rising numbers. We've all been taught for years that smoking is very bad for you, smoking kills all these people, and suddenly the message was, well, obesity is so bad it may be going to overtake smoking. That was really shocking to people. In adults, there's only like a little over two million deaths a year, so 500,000 is a very large number. Flegel agreed that obesity wasn't without risk. After all, it was associated with conditions like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and certain types of cancer. But she had found issues with some mortality estimates, even outright miscalculations. And she worried that these inflated numbers might skew health policy away from other important factors while providing a justification for rushing weight loss drugs onto the market. This will be the first time that the government has allowed a drug to be used for maintenance of weight loss. There was a drug Redux that got approved by FDA, which was later withdrawn from the market for safety reasons. One of the reasons it was approved, and you read this in the approval, is because we're not sure about this drug, but since obesity is so important, we should approve this drug. So we started to realize this wasn't just a you know, sort of little methodological uh, niche, but it actually was an important topic. Most of these population-level studies gauged risk using the Body Mass Index, or BMI, a crude calculation of weight versus height. But when Flegel completed her own large-scale analysis and broke it out into these categories, underweight, overweight, and obesity, she found something surprising. The number of premature deaths was far lower than what the public had been led to believe. And that wasn't the only twist. So the collective finding was that obesity was associated with about 112,000 deaths more than normal weight. But that was counterpoised by the finding for overweight, which was associated with about 80,000, 90,000 fewer deaths. Medical experts have told us repeatedly that being overweight can take years off our lives. Well, get this. Now a new government study says maybe not. It's not our intention to have a message. We just said, this is what we found, period. I think I should have prepared better for the onslaught of negative coverage. Critics attacked Flegel's work, claiming her results were skewed by looking at data that was overly broad. But as she reanalyzed her work in response, the findings stuck. We published a whole government report. We looked at all these issues of smoking and previous disease and weight stability and so on, and we found the same results, basically, no matter what we did. Even today, Flegel finds herself under attack, despite the fact that her results have long been accepted by the CDC. This narrative was being constructed that our article was dangerous and threatening to science, as though any new information is intrinsically dangerous. What does that say? Science is supposed to have new findings. 
counterintuitive results actually shape our understanding of weight all the time, despite the public skepticism they can produce. A new study finds that heart failure patients carrying extra pounds have a lower risk of death, and they're calling it the obesity paradox. Is it possible to be overweight and healthy? Are there times being overweight actually helps? For decades, researchers have found that heavier patients with conditions from heart failure to lung cancer can sometimes do better than thinner ones. These so-called paradoxes can upend standard protocols, as Betty Kahn found as a cancer researcher over a decade ago. Back then, worries over weight caused doctors to counsel breast cancer patients not to gain pounds during treatment and even put them on diets. But when she tested that rationale, Khan got a very unexpected result. In 2008, I published an article that demonstrated that, in fact, those people who gained weight had no worse outcomes. Those people who lost weight, however, did have worse outcomes. It was the first finding like this, so I thought that there's something going on that I have to pursue. As a good scientist, you want to make sure that the finding is right. The breakthrough finally came when CT scans showed that heavier patients also had more skeletal muscle, and that made all the difference. It took a while to get people used to that idea because there was such a belief that no, it was weight gain and that was important. I was part of a guidelines committee at that point from the American Cancer Society. In 2010, they weren't willing to accept my study, but now, 10 years later, there's been so many findings that they're going to be included. We have learned that overweight and even mild obesity is, for most cancers, associated with either an improved outcome or no worse outcome than people who are in the so-called normal range. While Khan focused on body composition, her fellow cancer researchers have discovered other seemingly paradoxical findings. Certain drugs, particularly in immunotherapy, are more effective on heavier patients, and being overweight can be correlated with less aggressive types of tumors. There are many answers to why the findings that we have are true. So I think that we've turned the tides to understand we have to study everything. If I have to conclude with anything, it's BMI is just a number. Assuming that that captures what's really going on in the body is not true. We should not be calling it a paradox. It's a finding, and we need to pursue the finding. If we didn't follow that and we just assumed that it was wrong, we may not find anything new. Obesity specialist Fatima Cody Stanford says that health is complicated, and by focusing on a weight chart instead of the science, we may be missing a chance to help everyone live better and longer lives. We've seen for so long that thinness equates to health because, I mean, the BMI chart tells us that, right? And when you tell anyone anything differently, even if the data support it, oh no, leanness wins, always wins. Dr. Stanford points out that for the majority of Americans, a healthy lifestyle should focus on factors like proper sleep, exercise, and a nutritious diet, instead of revolving around achieving the perfect weight or BMI. There is this hyper-focus on getting into these narrow, confined boxes that are often set up um, by us in both the medical and the public health community. We don't listen to people because we make these judgments about how they look and how they must feel. So the quality of care for patients with obesity is often significantly lower. This leads to poor health outcomes. You see a large number of people that are avoiding care and we miss diagnoses. For example, I've had a patient that had significant hip pain for quite some time. And the surgeons were like, well, you know, it's all because, you know, you just need to lose the weight. Then your hip will feel better. She lost 120 pounds, so what was the issue? She ended up having a big cancer in her hip. That went unevaluated, not because she didn't complain about the fact that she had hip pain, but all you could see was her excess weight. Kelly Peters had a similar experience. Her serious hormonal disorder went undetected for decades. I believed what doctors had been telling me for 20 years to just lose some weight. Just lose some weight and you'll be fine. I was never tested for anything. Nobody ever even sent me for an ultrasound. Not once. Until I was 35. As a fat person walking into a doctor's office, you're both blamed for everything because of your weight and dismissed, and they won't look beyond your weight. So you exist on this line between 
you're dying an early death and there's nothing really wrong with you that losing 50 pounds won't solve. I think we need to take a more holistic approach and it's not just the number on the scale, it's about other risk factors that can contribute to worsen um, health outcomes. So we have to look at the whole picture. It's not just one size fits all.